Remember Aww, Baltics Scott when here. I promised to never occupy you, says the Soviet Union. That's right, Stalin. You did. I lied. Ah! Yeah, that didn't really last long for the Baltics, did it? After the Russian Empire dissolved and the Soviets took over, the Baltics, all three of them, got their independence. That was only gonna last for like two or three decades. In a way, they're kind of like their own miniature Polands up here because they also were revived. Mongolian culture and traditions, daily lives of nomadic people, geography of Mongolia, and Mongolian language and arts. But then there's really only one thing people learning about Mongolia actually research. I would like to add Genghis Khan and the Mongolian Empire. If you think about it, that's really only a century of their history. They've been around for a lot longer than that. I know my favorite thing about them is as of 2023, they for some reason have a navy. Hey son, wanna join a big adventure to find the Northwest Passage and become a hero? Sure, that sounds like a great adventure. Not that long after, we've been trapped in the Arctic for years, our reserve of food is beginning to rot, and our relations with the Inuit only getting worse. Yeah, this really turned into like the mission from hell. It was trying to figure out this passage, and little did they know it was going to be a lot more difficult than they thought. Hello, this is Texas Instruments, how can I help you? Man portable anti-tank systems, of course we make man portable anti-tank systems. But boss, we don't make man portable anti-tank systems. Of course we do, my boy. Wait, you're telling me this thing was built by a company that makes calculators? I thought for a second maybe I just didn't know anything about this company in reality, but just googling Texas Instruments, I'm only getting calculators. Why are they making man portable anti-tank systems? Having several cities named after you. Having a country named after you. Having an entire historical era named after you. Having the title for a king slash emperor named after you for the next 2,000 years. Finally, having human history be dated by the year of your birth, also having swear words based on your name. Okay, it seems like Jesus probably did it best. Although you are missing a very important detail that a salad was named after this guy. Brings him pretty close. France watching Britain name all their new dreadnoughts after captured French ships and the ship Napoleon surrendered on. Something seems oddly suspicious about this. Slightly awkward time, but then again, the French and British ended up being friends. I mean, kind of. Don't say you love the anime Battle of New Orleans. Strength 5700 versus 8000. If you haven't read the the manga 900 British versus 8,000 Americans what okay I have to admit I definitely did not read the manga and the plot thickens even more with the war of 1812 it's hard for non-history buffs to imagine that it was the left one that was accused of numerous war crimes during WW1 yeah don't mess with these leave people I mean at the very least they will apologize numerous times for all the horrible trauma look who ended up sitting side by side in the EU ambassador meetings looks like we're putting the band back together again I wonder if there's actually any interest in the populace for them to do this I mean, it's been a while. That's a lot older than Yugoslavia and Czechoslovakia. Although I gotta admit, they definitely wouldn't be quite as big as they were before. When you're about to build a shopping mall, but you are in Rome. And apparently this happens like on a monthly basis. You can't build anything in Rome. You're just constantly stumbling upon old Roman architecture, or more specifically, mosaics. When you actually read this guy's art of war, uh... Just make sure you have the high ground. Genius, thank you. As if I didn't already learn that from the greatest movie of all time. I feel like Star Wars should actually copy strike this guy. In 1974, America declassified invasion plans for Canada made in the 1920s. Yeah, that might have made Canada feel a little bit awkward. But let's not forget Canada didn't have the exact same plans in their head. You always gotta be prepared for literally everything. Oregon trying to figure out how to get rid of a dead whale that washed up on the beach. Meanwhile, the Oregon State Highway Division, oh my goodness, it's genius. Just blow it up. What could possibly go wrong? Talk about cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Normal families. Son, you're going to be a dentist just like me. No, I don't want to be a dentist. I want to be a Fortnite streamer. Meanwhile, the Sanson family. Son, you're going to be an executioner just like all your ancestors in the last 150 years. I love you, dad. That seems like a fun job as long as you stay out of the splash zone. This family was just getting rid of everyone. The Egyptian head of state in the 13th century BCE. I just conquered a city and now my people worship me like a god. The Egyptian head of state in the 21st century AD. Israel beat me in six days and now I arrest anyone that criticizes me. It seems like the current Egyptian head of state in the 21st century just needs to reconquer this city again. Maybe that would fix everything. Oh wait, they're both the same regions. Ship captains in 2021. No, I wasted slightly too much fuel docking the ship. Meanwhile, Roman mariners. A little stormy? There's no way I'll survive this. Guess I'll just oof. It seems to be a little bit of a sprinkle out. I guess I'll go down with the ship. That's a true captain. Renaissance sculptors leaving their statues white because they are imitating decaying Roman marbles. Meanwhile, tabletop nerds painting their figurines by hand just like the ancients did. I think both have their place here. Well, I'm gonna become a tabletop nerd
third and just say, I didn't paint it because I'm trying to be more like the Romans. Although that means I have to buy only the white ones. When you invent the first successful military submarine and build the first rocket to land on the moon, but you end up being regarded as mostly a brain dead state. Finally, some justice for my birth state of Alabama. Maybe to achieve great things, you just need to sprinkle a little bit of ins. Me and my homie traveling back in 1894 to stop George Hudson from creating daylight savings. Honestly, if you don't do it, I will. Cause someone's got it. I've been despising daylight savings like the more and more I get older. It's nice in fall when you get to gain an hour, but it's literally hell when you have to lose an hour in spring. There are actually some places around the world that are just choosing to stop altogether. Well, actually, first of all, I should say there's a large portion of the world that doesn't use it in general. But now there's even beginning to be revolutions in places like Arizona and provinces in Canada. I know certain individual cities are just like, nope, we're not doing that anymore. This is Yamaha Instruments. How can I help you? Motorcycles? Of course we make motorcycles. But boss, we don't develop motorcycles. Of course we do, my boy. I actually wasn't completely aware that Yamaha made motorcycles. Maybe I was, actually. I didn't put it all together. But I'm also not really surprised. Didn't Yamaha make, like, everything? They make four-wheelers, generators, motors. Uh, I just knew them about, like, keyboards and stuff, musical instruments. It really is just, like, strange vehicles and, for some reason, instruments. That's it. What a weird combination of things. 1914 was clearly the worst time in history. No, it was clearly 1939. Meanwhile, around the year of 536, we've had hardly any sun for a year. It is the coldest year in history, and everyone is starving because of bad harvests. Oh, and don't forget, a plague is literally oofing everyone right now. Or at least half the world's population. And you know what? I bet you there are numerous examples of times hundreds or even thousands of years ago that arguably probably were a lot worse. It's just really easy to forget about them. Also, really just depends where you are in the world. Like, being anywhere near Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD probably wouldn't be too fun either. Egypt in 1200 BC. Greece in 500 BC. Persia in 520 BC. Rome in 150 AD. The Aztecs in 600 AD. China in 800 AD. And finally, there's the Scandinavians in uh, 1000 AD. A bit strange, isn't it? Everyone around the world was just building these incredible structures. Meanwhile, the Scandinavians just preferred that hobbit lifestyle. I'm just gonna assume this has to do with the fact that it's just way too cold up here. They ain't trying to build anything crazy. The Mesopotamians, the Hittites, the Egyptians, all of them, even China. Notice how I, like, intentionally didn't pronounce this one. Harap, 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 our pants. I don't know. Cut to nowadays. China's the only one left. Wait, is this serious though? Egypt is literally right there. It's a very different Egypt, but uh, it's still called Egypt. Uh, current Egypt is Egyptian only by name. Mongols invading Europe. We have Russia's reaction versus Poland's reaction. Russia technically was not yet Russia. It was Kevin Russ, but it was like their origin story. And then yeah, Poland was like fragmented kingdoms, but uh, they technically held back all of the Mongols from Europe. Poland did get a big dub over a very giant enemy over here. Living in France in 1346 be like, our army has been completely destroyed by England. I don't even know how I'm still alive. How could life be even worse? I'm sorry, but you also have the Black Plague. You won't make it past the next several days and it's going to be extremely painful. Again, another year that uh, probably wasn't too fun to be a part of. Won the most battles in human history. Has obliterated Europe many times. Lost against a superior enemy. Only remembered as the white flag country. Maybe this is all a part of the plan. If we only remembered them by having the most military victories in history, we'd be paying too much attention. They want to make sure that we have our guards down. Apparently, the Viet Cong are extremely afraid of the Ace of Spades. We should put them everywhere to freak them out a little bit. Yo, dude, the Americans are apparently putting Ace of Spades everywhere for some reason. Must be some strange American tradition. One thing's for sure, the Ace of Spades definitely wasn't lucky. Maybe it caused bad luck or I don't know, because we was going to have to escape Vietnam either way. Promise you won't cry? I promise. Out of thousands of Mesoamerican books and codexes, only 20 are known to have survived to the present day, meaning a a real amount of information regarding these civilizations has been lost as a result of book burning carried out by the Spanish. Okay, maybe it's okay to not keep this promise here, Cat. Been doing more and more research about that. I really don't get their explanation for it. Japan, we would like to negotiate a conditional surrender. Meanwhile, the USA, um, just hold on a second. We want to try something real quick. We're still mad about those boats you sunk. We will use modern combined arms to increase your casualties. Not with scorched earth tactics. We will make it difficult for you to push into our country. Okay, you shot first. Now stand and still, it's our turn. Sure thing, responds the British to the French. Man, conflict back in those days was just a whole lot more simple. Can we, like, go back to this or something? I've played so many Roblox games about it. Ancient Egyptians and Mayans building massive feats of mathematical prowess and architecture via temple slash pyramid structures. Meanwhile, ancient Britons putting some rocks in a circle. I'm not very good at it, but it doesn't matter. Oh man, those are some crazy rocks. And yet, I'm so sad I wasn't able to see them in real life. Crazy how it doesn't matter if you're building, like, a giant pyramid or just putting some rocks in a circle. 
cool. Humans just have this weird desire to always make stuff, no matter if you're good at it or not. And big thanks to my patrons. Drew, I forgot to kidnap you. Next date is March 19th, 2023 at 6 Boy, do I love Arby's. Drew's Eritrean grandma. Portugal is not Drew's Balkans. Argentinian $20 grandpa. $20 is a lot, Drew. A fat Norwal. Brighton is the Caleb best. Caleb H. Good old Ryan. Jack Traven's annoying John friend. John Denver. Denver. Loves Denver. 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 Denver.